for a hand clap of praise. Mm. I don't want this thing to fall off. First of all, I thank God for allowing me to be here in your presence and more so in the presence of Almighty God. Uh, my wife asked me before I left the house, she said, are you preaching today or teaching today? And being the husband that I am, I didn't answer her. <laughs> but it's not my intention to be long. How did it sound? You know, one time, I used to be in the funeral service business and a lady passed away and her son um, used to be a judge up in the Durham area and when I went to arrange the funeral for his mother he looked at me he said pastor we want you to preach but we don't want you to be long and so after we made the arrangements I was looking for him to give me a policy to take care of his mother's funeral arrangements. But he wrote a check for the whole amount. And when I saw the check, I said, I could do it in seven minutes. <laughs> I will not be long. I will not be long. I hadn't seen that many zeros in a long time. If you have your Bibles, I would like for you to go with me to the book of Isaiah, chapter 64, verses 4 through 6. And when you find it, say, thank you, Jesus. Isaiah, prophetic book of Isaiah. God gave Isaiah foresight and insight. Verse 4 says, For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, neither have the eyes seen, O God, beside thee what he all prepared for him that waited for him. Thou meetest him that rejoiceth and worketh righteousness. Those that remember thee in thy ways, behold, thou art wroth. For we have sin, and those is continuance, and we shall be saved. But we are all as an unclean thing, unclean thing. And all of our righteousness are as filthy rags. And we all do fade as the leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. I would like to use as a subject this morning, our righteousness, but his blood. Our righteousness, but his blood. Let us pray. Father, in the precious name of Jesus the Christ, the Son, the precious Son of Almighty God, the anointed power of thine Holy Spirit. We're asking you to stop by glad tidings just for a little while. Fill us with your love. Bring healing power of the Holy Spirit in this place. Let the fire burn that our hearts would be warmed and glad to know that we are in the presence of Almighty God. 
We're asking you to allow us to preach from these lips of clay and empower your word. For your word is all we have, and your word is all we trust. Amen. I would like for us to focus our attention on verse 6, and I will read it again. But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness as filthy rags. And we all do fade as the leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. What I pray that all of us, because all of us, believe it or not, are in the same boat. We're in the same boat. It doesn't matter if you're a CEO of the largest company in the world or if you are the maintenance worker or sanitation worker, it doesn't matter with God. One thing that I know that money can't buy, it can't buy us more time. And it can't buy us better health. God has blessed the doctors, the medical doctors, and they do the best they can. And I found out we got to listen to them. And I can't speak for you, but I can speak for me. At nighttime, I always got to have something sweet. I was with my doctor this past week, Dr. Jeff, Jeff McCallum, and he said, look, everything looks good. I said, yeah, but I gained four pounds, and I know why I gained it, because I got to have something sweet. And Pastor Tim on Thursday before I left came with this Hershey chocolate cake. that First Lady Kathy had made. And I knew I didn't need it. And then I think we wound up on the phone sometime this weekend. He said, Shed, sound like you're eating. I said, yes, this Hershey chocolate cake. (laughs) Well, it's almost gone. God is an awesome God. And he's worthy to be praised. When I think of our righteousness being nothing more but a filthy rag, I think of the prodigal son. When he went to his father, and you can find his story in Luke's Gospel, Chapter 15, 12 to 30, to the 32nd verse, you can find that. I will just summarize it for you. He went to his father and said, Father, I need for you to give me my inheritance. Everything that you've saved up for me, I need you to give it to me right now. Well, I could tell you that he wasn't a black boy, I'm not trying to be praised. I know it wasn't black because 50 years ago, I could see myself going to the one that raised me, my aunt, telling her, I need for you <laughs> to give me all. And, and before I could say the other part, I would have been on the floor. Because in those days, they didn't play. I can remember when, and you know, when my father passed, she went to my mother. She didn't say, let me raise him. She said, give that boy to me. And you go to work, give him to me. My grandmother, she had 24 grandchildren. 
I'm talking about first cousins. 20 of us was boys, four girls, and I gladly my aunt about raised all of them. And she didn't play. I can remember one time she told me to go to my grandmother's house and I made a detour. And I don't know how she knew I made a detour. And that night when I came home, my uncle was in his recliner. I walked in the door, he said, you gonna get it tonight. <laughs> and back in those days, they would tell you to take off your clothes. I know some of y'all don't remember this, but everybody over 50 should. Uh, and they tell you, get down to your underclothes. Back then, they tell you it would be your draw tails. And that woman whipped me until the sun refused to shine, <laughs> until the moon turned to blood. <laughs> and she called my mother after she whipped me. And see, I, I don't know if y'all remember this, but when they would whip you, See, they didn't call it spankings. They called it whoopings. And when they would whip you, you would lose your breath for about 30 seconds. And I think they made us sign a form of disclaimer, do not resuscitate. <laughs> um, she called my mother after that whipping. I remember that whipping. There's some whippings you remember. And you remember you would never do that again. But she called my mother and she said, Laura, the boy had the nerve to call on Jesus. <laughs> As she was whipping me, I called on Jesus. I called on Jesus. I called on Jesus. So I know that this prodigal was not a black child because those big mamas, we call them big mamas, but that woman only weighed 135 pounds soaking wet. They didn't play. And I shared with Felicia about 20 some years ago, I said, something is getting ready to happen with our little black boys. I saw it 20 some years ago. I said, they are not being raised the right way. They are not whipping them anymore. And people say that the problem was when prayer was taken out of school. That's half the problem. The other half of the problem when you took the power from the teachers. And when those little rascals learned to call 911, they would tell you, I'll call social service on you. And I would tell the one we had, call them. And when they come, I want them to take you. And don't bring your back. Because I'm going to tear your hind parts up. And maybe this prodigal son was a Jew. Maybe that's the way they did it back then. But he said, Father, give me the portion of my goods. Everything that you have, my inheritance, I, he didn't ask for half of it. He wanted it all. He wanted the whole thing. And his father gave it to him without questioning him. In my day, they would question you over a quarter. And the son took a journey into a far country because he didn't want his father or anybody to see what he was about to do with his inheritance. He joined himself with those of the land and had a good time. And after the good time, you know when you got money, you got friends. You got friends that you didn't even know was your friend. But they're just there for the good time. But when the money is gone, they're gone. And when the money was gone, he didn't have no money. 
and no friends. So he asked a certain person of that particular land, I need a job to take care of myself now. I surely can't go back home and let my father see me in this condition. And his job was to go out to the hog pen and feed the swine. He hadn't eaten for a while. And even the husk looked good to him. And as he was getting ready to eat, he remembered his father. He said, you know, I'm going to go back to my father. Do you know anybody that's lost? Is there anybody in your family right now that's lost? Any niece, any nephew, any brother, any sister, any child, any family member, do you know anybody that's lost? Do you know that all of our righteousness is nothing more but a filthy rag? So don't get or don't think too high of yourselves. We could be flying high today and we can be crashing the night. David said, I'm just a step away from death, hell in the grave. Maybe I need to show you how our righteousness really looks. In other words, I should never look down on anybody unless I'm stooping down to pick them up. I should never stick out my chest or lift up my head to say I'm better. Because as Job said, the Lord give it, and the Lord have taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I know how it is to be up, and I know how it is to be down. I know how it is to be well, and I know how it is to be sick. I know how it is to have money, and I know how it is not to have anything, and wondering how will the next bill be paid. I have been through it all. I know how it is to be wanted, and I know how it is to be in want. Is there anybody here like that? I don't believe you had it good all your lives. I, I need to show us, all of us, how our righteousness looks. I know some of y'all don't want to see this, but I'm going to show it to you anyway. This is how our righteousness looks before God. Our righteousness is nothing more but a filthy rag. Now, how did it get this filthy? You know, women, when they dust it, I guess it gets this filthy when they dust. And they wouldn't hold a rag like this. They would hold it like that. That's how a woman holds it. And the only thing you can do with a filthy rag is put it in the trash can. But thank be to God that Jesus didn't put us in the trash can. Jesus went all the way to Calvary Cross, to Calvary's Cross for us filthy rags. When God looks at us, this is what he sees. But then we say, but, but I'm not like that anymore. I'm in church. I've been in church 
all my life. I've been an usher. I've been a trustee. I've been a deacon. I've been a preacher. I've been a pastor. Surely I don't look like this. And Isaiah says, our righteousness is nothing more but a filthy rag. And this is what God sees when he sees our righteousness. Now I need to show you what the, how the blood looks and how the blood covers us. God said, I need somebody that will go and redeem my people. And Jesus looked at his father and said, if you will prepare me a body, I'll go, Father. I'll go, and they'll scourge me. They'll put a crown of thorns on my head. They'll crucify me. But Jesus said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all those filthy rags unto me. Though your sins be as scarlet, and this is the blood, what can wash? And this is the filthy rag. What can wash away my sin? And what can make me whole again? Nothing. And now when you got the blood, this is what the Father sees. Not your righteousness, but he sees the blood. The blood covers us. The blood washes us. The blood keeps us from day to day. What can wash away my sins? What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And I'm so glad. I'm so glad. The prodigal son... When he got to the hog pen, he said, my father didn't raise me like this. And I can relate to it. Because my senior year in college, I've done everything I wanted to do, and I can't tell you everything. Tell some and keep some. I wasn't born saved. I wasn't born right. Because I was born into sin and shaped in iniquity. But one night in Fayetteville, in my apartment, I got on my face, not on my knees, on my face. And I said, Father, my mother didn't raise me like this. Come in my heart and save my soul. And he did it right then. Prodigal son said, I'm going back to my father, and I'm going to ask my father, make me as one of thy hired servants. But as he was coming, had the stench on him from the hog pen, had clothes that was dirty and nasty, his father looked at him. He said, that's my son. The father can look past the dirt. He can look past the stink and see the very essence of the heart. He said, that's my son. He was dead. In other words, he was alive but spiritually dead. He was lost but now is found. And it took for the boy to lose everything that he had, to lose himself so that he could find Jesus. Sometimes it takes that. And the father said, go and get the best road. He didn't tell him, boy, you stink. He didn't say, why did you lose all your money? He said, go and put the best robe on him. And go and get the best ring. Now, this is my best ring that Miss Felicia got for me when we were married. 
I bought her a ring. She went and bought me a ring. That's the way you do it. Said, put the best ring on him. And put brand new shoes on his feet. He didn't clean him up. He just put it over him. So the only thing you would see is the glory of God. That's all you need to see now is the glory of God. And we got to pray for our sons, our daughters, our grandchildren, our nieces, our nephews, our cousins, our friends, and even our enemies that the glory of God will come back in the church one more time. The glory of God with dunamis power, healing power to come back in the house of God one more time and fill us with the anointing and the fire of the Holy Ghost one more time. 